Welcome back to another Family History Friday video with the Butler Area Public Library. I'm Margaret, and in this video, we are going to talk about Pennsylvania marriage records. Marriages are obviously a major life event that folks want to document in their ancestors' history, but they can sometimes be difficult to find. And this is because every state required marriage licenses at different times, and the records look a little bit different everywhere that you do research. So in this video, we are gonna talk about the specifics for the state of Pennsylvania. We'll talk about when marriage licenses were required and what they look like. We'll also look at some alternate records that you can use when marriage licenses don't exist to help fill in the gaps in your research. And we'll talk about some clues to help guide your research and where you're gonna find these records when you do go hunting for them. So generally speaking, when we talk about researching a marriage, we're looking for the marriage license, the official record of the event. When we are looking at marriage licenses in Pennsylvania, generally speaking, a marriage license would be issued to a couple if they were 21 years of age or older, or if they were younger than 21, it could be issued as long as a parent or guardian came with them and signed their consent to the marriage. There's two main eras of marriage licenses and record keeping in Pennsylvania. The first is a very brief time period between 1852 and 1854. And the second is from 1885 to the present. So in the 1850s, the state required marriage licenses be created. And Pennsylvania was actually relatively late to the game. Some of our neighboring states like Ohio had been creating marriage licenses for decades at this point. But in 1852, the state mandated that licenses be used and they were to be recorded by the Register of Wills office in each county with a copy sent back to the state. Unfortunately, very few records were actually created. For example, here in Butler County, there were about 55 marriage licenses issued in those three years. So most couples didn't take advantage of this rule and create this document. But when we do find them, this is what those records are going to look like. This is a register of marriages for Armstrong County from 1852. And we can actually see that there are two marriages being documented here, one in each column but they do ask for the names of the couple being married, their occupations, their residence, their birthplace, the information about their parents, um, the place and day and officiant for the marriage and the date that it was registered. After that failed attempt to record marriages in the 1850s, the state tried again in 1885. So starting in 1885, in October, marriage licenses were issued again in this state, and that has continued to present day. Uh, for this era of records, they were again created by the clerks in the Register of Wills office in each respective county, but now copies were not being duplicated and sent to the state. So there is no centralized state of Pennsylvania marriage um, record set the way there are for births and deaths. So you must research marriages at the county level. And records might look a little bit different depending on what year the marriage happened and even just in the location that it happened. So looking at some examples, here is a two-page marriage license from Butler County from 1888. On the left-hand side is the information about the couple applying for their marriage. And on the right-hand side is the information about the officiant and the return. Zooming in on that, we can see that we have the full names and ages of the man and the woman getting married, their residence, their parents' names. It would ask for guardian's information if a parent was deceased and the party was underage and had a guardian. There's a place to fill in a date of death or divorce if either of the parties in the marriage had been married previously. They needed to provide proof that that marriage was no longer valid. And they also have information about their occupations. But right at the same time period in neighboring Allegheny County, this is from 1886, um, a marriage license is just a third of a page. It's much smaller. It does ask a lot of the same info. We get names, birth dates, residence, occupation, 
and if there had been a prior marriage. So with this one, um, the woman on this license, Hetty Faulkner had been married once before, and we see that it was dissolved by divorce in October of 1883. But there isn't any information about parents or guardians' names on here. Coming back up to Butler County, here is a marriage license from a few years later in 1901. And at this point, the form has been condensed down just to a single page. At the top, we have the personal information about the applicants, and then the information from the officiant and the duplicate return after the marriage took place. So again, you're gonna find slightly different forms just depending on the date and the place that you're doing your research. Now let's say that you have looked at the courthouse where you believe your ancestors lived in that county and you don't find proof of a marriage. Now is when we have to start circling out a little bit wider in our research and maybe also consider some Gretna Greens. Now, a Gretna Green is a term for a place that couples would go to marry that wasn't their home. Um, it's named after the town in Scotland where many um, historic English couples would elope over the border. So a couple might have married out of town. Now, maybe it was a convenience factor. Um, they were en route to a honeymoon destination and just married in the major town that had a train station that they were using. Maybe it was a matter of convenience because they were teenagers or in their early 20s and they didn't want to go through the hassle of getting parental consent. So when we go to another community where no one knows us and it's a time period where we don't have birth certificates or photo identification that we're bringing with us, we can simply age ourselves up to the age of consent at 21. So when we're doing this, we might start by looking at neighboring counties around us in Pennsylvania, and then also consider neighboring states. So for us here in Western PA, we might hop over the state line and go to West Virginia or Ohio to marry. And here's an example of this. You will actually see this quite frequently in your research. So this couple, William Graham and Eulalia Stevens, were married on April 15, 1912, down in West Virginia, but both of them actually lived in the Pittsburgh metro area. William was born January 30th, 1892, so he was 20 on the day that they married, and Eulalia was born August 26, 1893, so she was just 18. But looking at this image here, this is just a cropped portion of their marriage license from the state of West Virginia. When they filled it out, they said that William was 22 and Eulalia was 21. So they were of age in the eyes of West Virginia and didn't need parental or guardian consent. So what if we can't find a marriage license, either because we've just run out of county courthouses to look at in the time period where a license would have been required, or because they married in the early 1800s or even the 1700s and marriage licenses simply didn't exist. What we're going to do is look for alternate records that were created at the time of the marriage. And two really common records you can see are either a church record or a newspaper announcement. Church records might appear in a couple of different forms. One is as an index of marriages. So here we're looking at an excerpt from the records of the Moravian Church in Leiditz, PA. We can see that they have been rearranged into alphabetical order by surname. So this is not the original church record as it was created. This is an index that has been compiled after the fact. But you may find originals either at the church itself, at a library, or online. This is an excerpt from an 1878 marriage that happened at St. Mark's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Butler, Pennsylvania. One challenge that you might encounter um, with this couple if you were researching is that these records are actually recorded in German as this was a German-speaking congregation. So do know that you might run into church records that are in other languages when you are doing your research. And newspapers. Often there would be a social announcement put out by the couple or their family announcing the marriage. So here we can see an entire series of marriages that appeared in the Butler Citizen newspaper on January 10th, 1877. And it's a nice substitute in this era when we didn't have actual marriage licenses. So we have the names of the couple getting married, 
the location, the date, the officiant, um, and the residences of the couple. So all of the information we might find on a marriage license itself is here in the newspaper. And we can find these going back quite far if you can find newspapers. Here's a couple who were married on July 4th, 1826 here in Butler County. And this brief notice of their marriage appeared in the newspaper a few weeks later on July 22nd. Even if a couple in your family tree that you're researching married in a time period where they had a license, you may want to look at newspapers to see if there was a social announcement that can add a little bit more contextual information. So these are two marriage announcements that appeared in the Butler Eagle in May of 1940. So both of these couples would have had a marriage license, but the article adds a little bit more information. So with the Rudish Barnhart marriage on the left here, we can see that we get information about their honeymoon at Conneaut Lake and Erie and where they graduated high school. In the one on the right for Velma Hayes and Wilbert Sheever, we get information about the time and place of the wedding. We know who their attendants were at the ceremony, and we even know that the bride wore a street length frock of Alice blue with navy accessories. If you're really struggling and you don't know a date that the marriage occurred, you might want to check your pre-existing genealogical research for clues. So you might find information about a marriage in someone's obituary, or you might find information in a biography that was put into a county history book. So this excerpt is from an 1895 county history, and in the circled section, we can see that it says on April 19th, 1842, Mr. Black married Catherine McBride. So there we get a marriage date to then pursue a church record or a newspaper announcement. As we know, in 1842, they wouldn't have had a license. Another place to guide your search for a marriage license are census records. Now, after 1880, all census records ask for marital status, but there's a few census years where they ask more specific information about the marriage. In 1900, they ask marital status and also the number of years married, so that will help you do the math backwards to the year that the marriage took place. Here we can see that this couple have been married for 29 years, and their next door neighbors below them have been married for two. In 1910, they ask marital status, so single, married, or widowed, and again, the number of years married. So this couple, Albert and Mary Richardson, have been married for five years. And if we look at the M in the marital status column, it actually tells us M2 and M1. So Albert has been married twice while this is Mary's first marriage. In 1930, they ask a little bit differently. They ask your marital status and then the age at your first marriage. So you have to do a little bit more math on this one, but we can see that Harry was 26 when he was first married and he's now 42. And his wife, Pacia, it was 18 when they married. She's now 34. So that lines up that that's probably the only marriage for this couple, but you might find ages there that indicate that there was a prior marriage for one or both parties. So now that we know what records and record substitutes are out there when we're documenting a marriage, how do we find them? So you can find a lot of marriage records online. This includes marriage licenses and church records that can be used as a substitute. You can find a lot of them for Pennsylvania on Ancestry or Ancestry Library Edition and also on Family Search. You might also find a location specific website, um, for example, the WV Culture site where I found that marriage license when we were discussing Gretna Greens. That is a site that's put together by the West Virginia Archive and can be found at wvculture.org slash VRR. So wherever you're searching, check and see if there might be a location specific repository online that you can use. Just know that whenever you're doing this kind of research, there might be date limitations to what is available online. For example, Butler County marriage licenses are on both Ancestry and Family Search, but only in the time period 1885 to 1906. 
So from 1906 to the future, if I want a copy of a marriage license that was issued here in Butler County, I have to go to the county courthouse. Here's just a quick look at a selection of Pennsylvania records that are on Ancestry in their card catalog. We can see it's everything from actual marriage licenses to church records and indexes. If we're doing in-person research, we can go to those county courthouses and visit usually the Register of Wills office to view the original marriage licenses. We can also visit libraries where we can find newspapers on microfilm. We might find indexes to the marriages that occurred in those locations. Sometimes they're indexes to the newspapers themselves. The Butler County Library System and the Newcastle Library System maintain indexes to marriage announcements in their newspapers, and there are often print books that have been put together for marriage announcements in newspapers that you can find on the shelf. We also have copies of church records here for certain churches, so you might want to check with your local library first to see if you can find a copy of a church record that way. And then you can also reach out directly to churches or dioceses and ask if they have material in their archive that could answer your marriage question. 